Welcome to Health Tracks. Health Tracks is a joint project between the CRC for Spatial Information and the Health Department of Western Australia. Health Tracks is an evolving suite of user friendly online applications designed to make health information more accessible and to help inform decision makers across the department. Health Tracks is currently made up of two distinct applications Health Tracks Mapping, which is a GIS based application for visualisation of health data, and Health Tracks Reporting a tool which provides customizable reports containing health statistics, charts, tables, and interpretations for a broad range of geographies. This video presents a demonstration of health tracks reporting and how it can be used by policymakers. In this example, we assume the role of health promotion policy planner in the WA Country Health Service has been charged with the task of implementing a new injury prevention program for young people. To gain an understanding of the leading causes of hospitalization due to external causes in the WA Country Health Service, we begin with the leading health conditions report. So we specify the hospitalisation by external cause data set as our data source. We then select metro country as our area type and country as the area of interest. 15 is the minimum age, 29 is the maximum age and then click view report to generate the output. Each report contains a link to an aids to interpretation document which provides definitions for the data and epidemiological measures contained in the report. Figure 1 shows the age standardised rate ratios for the top 15 conditions among males, ordered by number of cases and compared to the state rate. The legend below, Figure 1, indicates that motorbike, vehicle and motorcycle transport accidents is the leading cause for males and is significantly higher than the state rate. Figure 2 shows this was also the leading condition for females. Scrolling down further, the number of cases, standardised rate ratio and age adjusted rate with corresponding confidence intervals are shown in Table 1 for the male, female and combined populations. So we'll now investigate motor vehicle accidents in more detail with the specific condition report. We select this report type, leave the data set unchanged Select transport accidents as the major category, motor vehicle and motorcycle transport accidents as the minor category, and leave the other report parameters unchanged. Figure 1 shows the age standardised rate per 100,000 persons over the six years of data available. Trends have remained relatively stable over that period, but male rates were consistently more than double female rates. The interpretation below tells us that overall, the number of hospitalisations increased between 2005 and 2009, but the annual average percent change in rates is not mentioned, as there was no significant change. Table 2 shows a breakdown in the number of hospitalisations by Aboriginality and sex, revealing that the highest number of cases were in non-Aboriginal males. We will investigate the difference in rates between Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal persons later in an Aboriginal comparison report. Finally, Table 3 and Figure 2 show a breakdown by age and sex. In Figure 2, we see that the 15 to 29 year old age group is clearly a key target group for motor vehicle accidents. Now it would be useful to explore where the program will be best targeted by comparing rates across health regions. To do this, we select an area comparison report, change the area type to health regions and leave the other report parameters unchanged. Figure 1 shows motor vehicle and motorcycle accident hospitalisation standardised rate ratios for each region compared to the state rate for males and Figure 2 contains the same information for females. It's clear that the country health service regions had significantly higher rates compared to the state while the metropolitan regions are significantly lower. Table 1 shows the number of cases, standardised rate ratios and age adjusted rates with corresponding confidence intervals for the male, female and combined populations. Here we see that the wheat belt has the highest age adjusted rate for the total population. Finally, Table 2 shows that motor vehicle and motorcycle accident hospitalisations cost approximately $2.6 million in the wheat belt in 2009 and over $40 million across the state. Based on this, we decided that the program would be best implemented in the wheat belt, but we might be interested to know if it would be more effective to target the Aboriginal or non-Aboriginal population specifically. 
To investigate this, we require an Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal comparisons report for the Wheatbelt Health Region. Aboriginal male and female rates are not displayed due to rules in place to suppress potentially unstable rates based on counts of less than 20 cases. However, we see from the age-adjusted rate for all persons that the Aboriginal rate is much lower than the non-Aboriginal rate, and the interpretation below tells us that this difference was significant. Figure 1 shows age-specific rates by sex for WA, and we see that for the whole state, not just the Wheatbelt region, the situation is actually the opposite and Aboriginal rates are consistently higher than non-Aboriginal rates and also stay higher into older age groups. Finally, figure two in the interpretation below indicate that while vehicle accidents cause a slightly smaller proportion of all hospitalisations due to external causes in the Aboriginal population, they are responsible for a slightly larger proportion of all transport accident related hospitalisations. So to summarise, the data show that an injury prevention program would be best targeted at reducing motor vehicle and motorcycle accidents among non-Aboriginal males in the wheat belt. And that's the power of health tracks.